today's project diary, I will teach you how to grow carrots from seed. Hi and welcome to Project Diaries. In today's video, I'm going to teach you how to grow carrots from seed in containers. Now there are so many myths and fake information and blatant lies on the internet about growing and the main one that I keep seeing is regrowing carrots from carrot tops. Now while this is a really good project to do with children and get them into gardening, all it will do is grow the greenery on the top, you won't actually get another carrot. Um, there are some other things that you can't regrow but there's just a, an abundance of really fake information about regrowing stuff. But you can regrow potatoes and you can regrow um, garlic. So I've already done those videos if you want to go and check them out. But today I'm going to grow carrots and here's how to do it. So just as a quick side tip, if you are interested in growing carrot tops with kids, all you need to do is just get around an inch or two from the carrot's top and place it in a bowl of water or quite a deep saucer. As you can see from the example on the right, after a month or so the greens will start to grow and these are edible but you won't actually get a full carrot from doing this. In very rare cases after a few months these greens may actually bolt and go into a flower stage where you might be able to harvest some seeds. I will show you how to harvest seeds from flowers later on in the video but right now you may need to get some seeds online. Now there are so many different varieties of carrots ranging in different sizes, many different colours and lots of different shapes. So if you do want to get some seeds online, I will leave some of my favourite varieties in the description box below. Now carrots are an extremely popular root vegetable, but they can be a little bit tricky to grow. But hopefully with this video, it will give you a lot clearer idea and a lot higher success rate. So first up, you're going to need a container. Now I suggest a container that's uh, no less than 10 inches deep. Um, the carrots are going to need to grow quite tall, uh, depending on the variety again. Um, so what I need to do is first off drill some holes in this and then fill it with compost. Now carrots need really good drainage so I'm going to use the biggest drill bit that I've got and drill lots of holes in this bucket. Also check what plastic your bucket is made from. If this is a 5 and labelled PP that's polypropylene and the safest plastic that you can use. You want to avoid any plastics that have the number 3, 6 or 7 including polystyrene. These can leach really harmful chemicals into the soil which will then transfer into your vegetables. Once you've found an appropriate bucket to grow your carrots in, you want to drill some drainage holes all across the base. Try to do as many as you can but space them out accordingly. You don't want to do too many in order for it to weaken the base. You also don't want to drill too fewer holes because if the bucket gets waterlogged the roots may end up rotting. Now you've got holes in your container, you need to fill it with compost. Uh, now I wouldn't use homemade compost because it will have too many seeds in it from food waste. Uh, so get some from a store. Now unfortunately I got the cheapest one from the supermarket and it's really, uh, it's got loads of bark and bits in it. Um, so you're going to need a sieve. Uh, the reason why you need to sieve it is because if the carrot starts growing and it hits a rock or something hard, it will fork out and you'll get a funny looking carrot. So you want it really light and fluffy soil. Um, so I'm just going to do that now. Now I love my soil scoop that I've made from a recycled milk bottle. If you don't know how to make this, the link should be on the screen now. But for today's project, I'm going to use quite a lot of soil, so I'm just going to tip it straight in from the bucket. Now regardless to wherever you buy your compost, I would suggest filtering out any of these chunks anyway, just in case. Because growing the most successful carrots, you will need the lightest and fluffiest soil. If you're interested in buying any gardening equipment online including this soil sieve I will leave a link to my Amazon recommendation page in the description box below. Once you've sieved all the big chunks out you can discard of these however you see fit. You also want to leave around 3 inch gap at the top because you will fill this in later on after sowing the seeds. Now these seeds are quite small so be really careful if you're sowing them on a windy day. Now I'm going to start sowing these on a clockwise position going from the outside in. I'm also going to leave around 1 to 2 inch gap in between each seed. Now lots of other gardeners will sow these seeds quite liberally and then thin out any of the weaker seedlings as they emerge. But I find this a real waste of seeds so I'm just going to do it this way. Now the earliest time to sow carrot seeds is between 3 and 5 weeks before your last frost date. Now the English spring weather last year was all over the place so it may be a good idea to grow these in a more sheltered spot but make sure they get at least 6 hours of sunlight a day. Now another good way to grow carrots is to use 50% sand and 50% sieved compost. That will give you an extremely light soil to grow carrots in but you will need more fertiliser doing it this way. Once these carrot seedlings start to emerge from the soil you want to give them a fertiliser around once a week. 
Once you've finished sowing all of the seeds, you want to lightly scatter the rest of the soil into the bucket, but make sure you leave around one inch gap at the top. Again, lightly spread the soil around the top, but don't pack it down in any way. Packing the soil down will stop the delicate seedlings from pushing through and lower your success rate. When you're happy it's really level, you want to give these seedlings a really good soaking. Now lots of people still keep asking me what this green water is, it's actually just rainwater, but the algae from over the winter has basically grown and it's turned it green. I will be doing a whole series of videos this year on how to make homemade fertilizers, so don't forget to subscribe. But here's a link on the screen to ones that I've already created so far. So when you water these, you really want to do it deeply as you can see that I'm doing here. When the weather starts warming up throughout the spring, the top layer might start drying out between the first two or three inches. So it's a really good idea to water deeply. You may only need to water once a week, but keep your eyes on moisture levels. Due to sowing the seeds in colder weather, they will take a bit longer to germinate. So here they are between three and four weeks later. Here they are again at six weeks, Around eight weeks you can see a huge change and a lot faster growth spurts. And here they are again at nine weeks. Now another great thing about growing carrots in containers is the fact that the height will actually stop carrot fly. Growing carrots in the ground can allow them to be attacked by many pests but I will cover those again later on in the video. So these haven't had the, uh, the best growing season at all, uh, mainly because this is supposed to be English uh, summer and it's been raining and really windy and last night we even had an electrical storm. Um, but basically, depending on what variety you've got, uh, these will take between sort of 70 and 80 days to mature. Um, I've let these go into a flower stage. Um, you can get the seeds from these once they've reached this, uh, this uh, maturity. Um, but I'm, I'm gonna give you a, a close up now. As you can see, the storm has really damaged these, but they have actually managed to bolt, which means they're gonna flower and turn into seeds. Now carrots don't produce the prettiest flower but these buds will then soon mature into something like this and the final flower stage will look something like this. After a few weeks this flower will then start dying back and the petals will start curling into itself a bit like this. After another few weeks this flower will then completely die back and produce little seed pods. Allow these seeds to mature and dry out over another few weeks and then you can harvest the seeds. Now as I said before, carrots are prone to carrot flies, they're also prone to wire worms and flea beetles. But one of the worst attacks I've had this year are from root aphids. These attack your carrots from the ground up and left over time they can cause significant damage. A good way to spot if you have root aphids is look out for the amount of ants that seem to be around your carrots. Ants farm aphids for food and will protect them from lots of other predators. Once your carrots are weakened by these pests, it can then open them up to diseases like Aster yellow disease. This disease can overwinter and attack next year's crop and it will also cause your carrots to grow shorter, discoloured and produce hairy roots. There are many ways to prevent these pests from spreading but one of the best ways is try to get beneficial insects into your garden. Here is my video on just how to do that. Now the wind from the storm has disrupted quite a lot of the soil around these carrots but just before they're ready to harvest they should start protruding out of the soil. Once you see the top of the carrots, you can see exactly how big it's going to be and once it starts pushing out of the soil a few centimetres, it's easy to pull them out. Just try to get down as low as the green part and try to pinch the top of the carrot and give it a gentle twist. Hopefully at this final stage, your soil should still be light and fluffy and it will pull out quite easily. Even with virtually no summer and lots of bad weather this year, I've still managed to get quite a nice harvest and I still have a few more to pull out yet. There's absolutely no problem you leaving carrots in the ground a little bit longer than you need to. But if you have harvested more than you need, the best way to store these is to take off the tops, clean them thoroughly with cold water and then place them in a Ziploc bag and put them in the fridge. If you don't do this, your carrots may go soft and limp within a few hours. I thought I'd come into the shed to finish off because it's getting a bit too wet out there but if it is rainy where you are just think it saves you the hard work of water in the garden and uh, you've just got to stay positive. Anyway I hope you enjoyed today's video on how to grow carrots from seed and I'll see you again next time. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you again soon. If you'd like to keep up to date on all of my future releases click the subscribe button here. Here are some links to some of my other videos. And if you've tried this or any other project, I'd love to see your progress, so please join my Facebook gardening group where thousands of people are sharing photos and ideas daily. 
Thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time.